Hello and welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Tim Scallon, registered dietitian. And I'm Manuel Marini, executive chef. And so today we're just looking back at Memorial Cooking Innovations. And you know, six years ago, you and I started revising menus for our hospital patients. Do you remember? I remember. And that's actually... That was not an easy day. No, it Those was were hard. not easy. No, because you were the chef and the artist and making food taste good, and I was the dietitian with all the rules, and, you know, we've got to fit the healthy guidelines, and it was a struggle at first. It was. But it was from that struggle that Memorial Cooking Innovations was born. True. And so, okay, do you remember, so when we were first starting to work on recipes, you know, one of the things that uh, I started learning was how you were bringing uh, fresh flavors into the foods. That is true, that you were surprised. And, and in fact, a lot of people may not realize that in institutional uh, cooking, and that includes hospital foods, uh, there's, there had been a trend for a long time to use pre-cooked, pre-prepared, but when Sodexo came in, and you brought this with Sodexo, using fresh ingredients and making foods from scratch, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, we went back to traditional. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it is, it's our standard. So. And, and there's just no comparing a TV dinner and a fresh made meal. There's just quality-wise, there's no comparing. And that's probably why everyone loves the food at Memorial. We get a lot of good comments, mm -hmm. you know, on our food and mm -hmm. the choices they have. Yeah. That's another thing. Yeah. Well, and so in that struggle where we're trying to figure out and we want to maintain our uh, healthy guidelines, if we're taking out fat and we're taking out sodium, strong flavors, you, you helped us learn about putting in uh, using fresh, fresh herbs, herbs. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, moving the low sodium out and mm -hmm. adding something to bring the flavors up. Had to use some different cheeses. Have to use some of the drier cheeses more often than the soft work, right. soft ones. Right. You know, we started working with uh, uh, low sodium vegetable broth. Well, we also took original, you know, traditional recipes and mm -hmm. made them a healthier version. Still enjoying yeah. that tradition. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So. Do you remember? Okay. Before I tell you that, I've got to say one more thing. You know, when we were uh, working together, it was like I was an, a, a chef's apprentice learning. And I was a dietitian apprentice. It was. It is. It is. Yeah. We both learn and yeah. we both watch each other. So, do you remember when uh, we did? a healthy chicken fried steak. I remember, and you said it can't be done. And we did it. Ooh, chicken fried steak right here in East Texas. Right here in East Texas. Good but we're gonna do the healthier version of it. Okay. Which so is nice. It, it's something that you'll be able to enjoy at home and okay. easy to make. Now, Chef Manny, I know there are viewers in our audience that are saying, no way, chicken fried steak healthy. Yeah, it will be. Okay, all right. The recipe is pretty simple. We're going to do an egg wash, okay? okay. We're going to do an egg wash with a little bit of garlic. All right. All right, and let me get my bowl and right And some here. people may not know when you say an egg wash, they may not really know what you're talking about. But if, if, you, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll explain that. Yeah, definitely, you. definitely. Uh, so an egg wash basically is where you get something, you take egg and milk and put it together, and you're going to dredge your whatever you're breading in the egg Chicken, wash. Chicken, fish, beef, in this case it's beef. So you know, we're going to go ahead and just Add a whole egg. Okay, and so, and then after the egg wash, then you're going to put it in the in the dry mix, right? Right. Okay. And this is this is and not this any is different than traditional chicken fried steak. I mean, our grandmothers did chicken fried steak the same way. Now we just added a little bit of skin milk to it, just to thin okay. it out. So we're just going to whip it. Yep. Okay. Okay. We're going to add a little bit of garlic to All give right. it some flavor. Yep. You know, in this dish. There are about three things that we do, thereabouts, to make this chicken fried steak healthy. Now, the first thing that we do is the obvious thing. We have to shrink that Texas-sized chicken fried steak down to a four-ounce serving, and that way we have more room on our plate to, you, to put other healthy foods in there. So okay. there's that inclusion thing. We're including some uh, fresh vegetables to go with this uh, lean beef. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side. Okay. Here, we're gonna grab a little bit of the cornmeal. Yep. And a little bit of flour, okay? We're just gonna do it, because this is where we're gonna pat it down with. Okay. Okay. All right. Then I got the 
chopsticks there. Now we're gonna pinch it. When we say a pinch, right? A pinch yeah. of salt. Yeah, I always have add, to remind you of that. Yeah, you and know. you're getting good at it. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm around you. You know, uh, they train dietitians on things like that. Okay, so here we're just gonna pinch, right? Okay. Now, one thing that you asked me was whole black pepper. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I got me one of these black pepper milk. Yeah. And I like it. I like it because you use whole, it'll last you for a good long time, but yep. you get the freshness yep. than just your regular table. I like both. This is something that maybe gives a little more flavor to. Now, I'm surprised you're doing your pepper on the meat rather than in your dry mix. Tell me about that. I want it to stick really good okay. on the meat. Yeah. So you're going to kind of, you're going to almost down kind of massage bit. that yeah. in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay. All right. I got, we got the, by the way, we have the yep. pan going with the yep. little olive oil. Yep, he's going good. It's going good, okay, so we're going to pat this down. Now, we're going to take this. This is and, the egg wash part. And here's a very important thing. Okay. Never do too much egg. You could always add more egg. Again, we're throwing away stuff when yeah. we have leftover because yep. we got to discard of this, yep. right? It's right. no good for later, so. We're going to go ahead and drench this real good. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and pat it here. I mean, fix this real good. And so we've got a lean cut of round steak here, and we and these round steaks are ten, tenderized. Sometimes people call this a cube steak. And, and you can buy a chuck too. You know, cut yeah. it nice and then pound it yourself. You yeah, know but I mean? now your round steak's going to be leaner than that chuck. And okay, so, that's true. So see, that's we're using a lean cut of beef here, and just to give you an example on that. Uh, this cut of, of round steak has about 8.9 grams of fat. Let's just say 9 grams of fat in this serving. In a, uh, in a chicken uh, thigh, there are 8.5 grams of fat. Uh, so about the same. Now, granted, a chicken breast is 3 grams of fat. Okay, so chicken breast, now you add the skin back in, that brings it back up to 8 grams of fat. So we're in the ballpark with a piece of chicken on this. So now we're just going to brown it on one side, turn it around, and we're going to th finish it in the oven. Okay. A pan like this will probably give us about three or four steaks. Yep. So we want a nice gold, golden brown. How's that look, okay. Tim? So you're getting, getting a good brown. And so really the objective on, in this step is not really to cook the inside. You really just want to get, Sear a, get, it from the outside. get just, some browning. Right. And then okay. we've got our oven at 350. Okay. Go ahead and we'll stick it in here. We're going to add a little bit of flour, just a little bit, because we're making the gravy, right, Tim? Yep. So we just want to, uh, the flour is going to help absorb all the, the oil and the fat from the beef, the little fat that was released, and the onions. Okay. Cook that off a little bit so it doesn't taste yep. floury. And then it, we're going to add our skin milk. Any, uh, any gravy or sauce that you make, if you're going to use flour, and this would also be true if you were using cornstarch, another thickener, uh, the recipe always tells you to bring it to a boil and boil it for one minute. <clears throat> and the reason is so that you cook the starch so it doesn't taste pasty. Exactly. Yeah. See how it thickened up it real nice? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Still. Now you know, I think ready. I like this better than the traditional gravy. Now notice how he's using a small amount of gravy there. Put a little uh, bit on the mashed potato, yeah, what do you think? Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be two tablespoons. Okay, so I think you were actually just, just that was right. pretty good. Well, yeah. a tablespoon is three teaspoons, and, and, and actually you only used five of those. So, so you, did yeah, you did okay, good. good. You did good. You did good. Sounded good. We covered the whole thing. I mean, it's we didn't beautiful. have to overdo ourselves. Yeah, it's beautiful. We got a lot of good comments on that chicken fried steak. We sure did, but remember that time we went fishing? You know... You really hooked me on those recipes that time. <laughs> That's bad, isn't it? Memorial Cooking Innovations. Starring Tim Scallon. With Chef Manny Marini. Sponsored in part by Brookshire Brothers. You did a good job, Tim. This is fun, isn't it? Yeah, you did a great job. Okay, so you got a nice little uh, white perch there, so. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go straight from the backbone. Okay. Work my way in. Take your time. And you're gonna end up with a nice thin filet there. And that's what we want. Yeah. And you know, this is what people enjoy. 
mm -hmm. eating. And and that thin fillet, there's we're we're going to talk about that when we're cooking in a, in a little bit. The bones right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you always ask, how do you clean a fish? People yeah. tear yeah. it up, yeah. kind of lose. Yeah. And because you didn't do what I thought. You didn't. I thought you were going to like cut the head off, cut the tail off. But go ahead. This is the way I do it. Yeah. Was yeah. the yeah. backbone is right here. So what I want to do is I want to get my knife right on the bone and just guide myself right with right. the bone. Okay. The bone will do the, everything for you. Okay. Once you put your hand on there. Okay. And then you slide your, the bone will guide you no matter okay. where you go. This one's really actually a good size, huh? This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is my first time going freshwater fishing. Oh really? You know I'm a saltwater yeah, fisherman. Yeah, yeah. So this is this was fun. Okay. Now we got some two nice ones. All right. Now we're back. You just flipped your vegetables, right? Yep. All yep. right. Excellent. Just turned them. The potatoes. Ooh, ah, very nice. See how it reduced and thickened up? Yes. They're gorgeous. I am gonna put these to the side. All right. All right. So I am gonna put them here to the side for a minute. Then we'll yep. pull them out. Now let's get ready for the fish. Okay. You're going to have room on that stove for both of those Yeah, well, pans? I'm going to put them in the back in just a minute. Okay, okay. okay. So okay. What, we, what I want to do is let's do the egg wash. Okay. Something simple. I got a now, little egg. Now, while you're doing this, I, I have to say, I thought that we were doing, okay, we're doing pan-fried white perch, but we're not supposed to be eating fried food when on a healthy diet. But it's how you fry it. That's right. You That's know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Deep frying it absorbs all that oil. So there's a difference. There's there is pan difference. frying and there's deep frying. Okay, okay. So, so all right, I just had to I get I got that. me a nice little egg. All right. Now, are we really all going to bring this with us everywhere? Do you take this with you everywhere? I take one of those hey. everywhere I go. Okay. Well, almost everywhere. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so if we don't have a whisk, that's yes. okay. Use a fork or use a spoon and whip it up, okay? But you but had me with me. You got a chef. So you so, got a whisk. Yeah, so we got one, all right, Tim? Okay. I got a little bit of eggs. Now, here's the deal. Fried eggs, you know how they bubbled, aired up, not fluffy? Okay. Add a little bit of water. Okay. All right. Breaks the surface tension. Breaks it, a yeah. Bit. So that's okay. what I want to do, okay? okay? Just a little bit of water. Or you could use milk, huh? You can use milk, definitely. Okay. You got milk out there? All right. We're going to put that to the side. Okay. I'm going to put that to the side. Now, let me get this little guy right here. So you're gonna, you've got an egg wash, and then you're gonna create a dry. Uh, dry. So we got a little bit of flour. Okay. Okay. I know this is a big thing, but we brought yeah. plenty of these. Yeah. They're not that expensive. Okay. We're gonna add a little bit of parsley. Okay. All right. Now there's another way of doing this. We were talking about this earlier, uh, earlier today. Today, yeah. But, but let me let's do this one first. We're gonna okay. add a little bit. Of, we're gonna season this, the flour with a little bit of pepper. You're doing this the way. And our, a pinch, Tim. A pinch, a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt. And you're doing this the way here in East Texas our grandmother would have done it, mixing all the dry ingredients and you've got your, your wet ingredients. But I want you to explain for our viewers the different way to, to uh, ha and a different way. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me pull this out. Okay. And what I am going to do is I'm a, while we talk about this, I am going to switch you pans. Start heating How's that? the pan, okay. All right. All right. Now, what I would have done I mean, we wrote this recipe, we talked yep. about it, but we want to make people comfortable. Yeah. I would have put all the ingredients in here in the in egg. In the egg. The just reason just for the that, flour over here. Just the flour. So you want flour and, and seasonings in the egg. Now in tell the me egg. why. Only because we're going to wash the egg, it's going to absorb yep. all of it. The flour is just going to coat the outside of it. Okay. If it does flake off, you're going to lose some of the flavor. Yeah. Right? Make sense? Yeah. So in other words, you're sealing the flavor in, in. by putting the seasonings in the egg. Yeah. And, okay. and you know. That just, makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. we can they can catch it. If they're watching the show, they can catch it and say, oh, you know, that makes sense. Now, but, it, you know, if you want to keep up with traditional, this is good, too. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between pan frying and deep frying because there's there's uh, the thing that makes pan frying healthy is the kind of oil that you use and the amount. We're going to use a healthy fat, olive oil, and pan frying uses just a very small amount of oil. Uh, whereas deep frying, you're immersing the food in hot fat and the, the fat is soaking into the inside of the food. So when Makes we sense. eat uh, french fries or fried chicken or mm -hmm. potato chips, we're eating deep fried foods and we're getting a lot of oil, cooking oil, when we eat those foods. 
And in fact, when we eat those foods out, uh, a lot of times we're getting some trans fat too, which is as bad as saturated fat, clogs our blood vessels. I mean, the french fries are good. Well, they taste but you know, wonderful. But, but you know what? We can still do it the way we're going to do the fish. Well. Because if you cut your own potatoes, yes. you did your own french fries, yep. and you fried them in very little oil, yep. and just flipped them over, you know what Finish I mean? Finish them in the oven. Yep. You're done. You got some really nice fries. Well, or big I'm, fries. And I'm glad you said that because, you know, uh, it, it wasn't too long ago that we did a chicken fried steak. Okay, you remember we did yeah. the healthy chicken Oh, definitely. Chicken fried it was steak. a good hit. And, and that chicken fried steak, it was a little thicker cut of meat than these are. These are thin. Whereas, if, if so, on these, because they're so thin, you're going to be able to do the, uh, cook those, pan fry them, and not have to finish them in the oven. Right. If it was a thicker cut, you'd do like yeah. that chicken fried steak. Exactly. Same initial, pan fry, finish it in the finish oven. Or, uh, or if you're doing a chicken, the same way. Okay. Butterfly it, yep. thin cut. That way you can saute it real quick, reach the temperature, make sure it's cooked all the way. You're done. Okay. okay. You don't have to finish it in the oven. Okay. If it's a chick, a, a thick piece of chicken breast or something like that, then you do have to finish, finish it, in, it the in the oven. Okay. Okay. So. This uh, is working awesome. All right. This is what everyone needs when you're camping. So we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil, okay, Tim? Yeah. Yeah. So the difference in pan frying and deep frying is how much oil you use, not as much with pan frying, and you're using a healthy fat. And then you're going to shake, shake, not you, Tim. You, you want me to shake? No, no, not you. No. Oh, not me. We're you just going to shake the excess Shake the flour. extra batter off. Okay. Yeah. Well, right. and that's an important step because the more batter you have on the food item, the more, it, more fat is absorbed. There's another important uh, step about uh, pan frying, and that is you want your oil hot enough that when you put the fish in it, it sizzles, but not too hot that it burns, it burns. before it cooks the middle. And how do you know that? If your oil is smoking or when you first drop it and mm -hmm. smokes up, that's a little too it's hot. It's too hot. So our, and could, that's what we're doing right now. We're just slowly, slowly frying it. So you could test the oil perhaps by uh, putting maybe some chopped onion in it. I thought maybe I could stick your finger in it. Well, that would work too, but I like <laughs> the chopped onion idea better. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got to go and see it sizzling yes. right now. Yep. So yep. it's perfect. But the, the best way to do it, and I'm, let me flip it over real quick, is look at the thickest part of the fish mm -hmm. and just put your hand in there and if it flakes off you're ready to go okay. remember the thickest part because you know yeah. the yeah. ends are really done they're gonna cook first so yeah. you want the middle part of it okay. really on the fish okay well how about our trip to Costa Rica and the coffee ship and you know Tim you thought coffee was just drinking and boy was that good it's the truth it's the truth you you took coffee and made something incredible with it we got a nice recipe it calls for pork loin a little coffee, coriander, a little black pepper, okay. red wine, red wine vinegar, or Ooh. balsamic vinegar. Yeah. And let's talk about balsamic vinegar. Okay. Here, I got some. I had some red uh, red wine vinegar opened okay. up. Okay. Vinegar is vinegar. Balsamic. It, the only difference is a distinguished flavor. It's a to different it. flavor. Yeah. You know, balsamic is a little raspberry. You know, fruity flavor. But don't go out and buy a balsamic vinegar. If so, you have vinegar. So so, and that's, you know, that's a good point because when, when we developed this recipe, when you and I were talking about this recipe, you, you developed it, but when we were talking about it, you said, I want to use balsamic, but what I'm hearing you say is that you didn't have one open, you had this, so. I said, you know, I don't want to force people to go out because yeah. sometimes you're saying, yeah. you know, you go out and buy a product, there's mm -hmm. other, other substitutes that you can use mm -hmm. that are still as good as it, whatever the recipe calls for. Okay. Any recipe when okay. you open a book, okay? So here's what we got. If you don't mind, Tim, I see what you brought me. Yeah. You use that a lot, Tim? Well, actually, I brought a mortar and pestle. and uh, I got a little, a few coriander seeds, okay? Okay. We're not going right. to do much. And, you know, uh, people may not know mortar and pestle, but, but you, know, you put them out of pepper peppercorn. you want. You could use, if you don't have whole black pepper, don't worry about it. Use table and, ground. And I'm going to put this you know, where, where, we can, where we can see show, what I'm yeah. doing. You know, a mortar and pestle is one of those items that you learn to use. And it's, it's, a, it's a good kitchen item to have because it's just very useful for grinding things. Now, you won't use it all the time, but when you need one, it's, there's just nothing better. Notice how it doesn't use any electricity. I'm burning calories as I'm grinding these uh, peppercorns and coriander. You're doing a great job there, Tim. And this is gonna this is gonna make a very good uh, uh, marinade. Actually, what we're mm -hmm. gonna do with it? 
Okay, there you go. That's beautiful. Here, I have some nice pork loin. Okay. Okay, Tim. Got some nice pork loin. What we're going to do is we're going to season this up real good. Let me put them all three together. Mm -hmm. One for me, one for you, one for Randy. Okay. You know, Randy always tells us he enjoys coming to do he, this show. He loves to film this show. Because, you know, what do we eat right after this? You know, it, it's not everybody that gets this kind of uh, benefit. No. Right, Randy? <laughs> so yeah. here we go. Okay. He's so not, here's your, yes, here's that's your the way vinegar. It is. A little okay. vinegar, right? It okay. calls for a little wine. I got a yep. little wine here, Tim. Okay. So we're going to put a little wine on there as well. Okay. All right. Now. So basically, you're creating a marinade is what you're doing. Guess what I need? What? A little coffee beans. Oh, okay. This well, is the fun then, part of it. Then we need to grind some coffee we need, beans. If you don't mind, would you okay. grind me some? I, said, yep. I saw you brought the coffee grinder. I did. Okay, so I ground this earlier. Wait, I thought what? I thought that was... Margarine? Margarine. <laughs> you know, what do you do with those leftover margarine containers? Well, they're a good thing to store ground coffee. Smell. Oh, that is smell. That it's smells good. awesome. And so, so I ground this Here earlier. I, I am going to. Yeah, ground this earlier, and then uh, I'm going to grind you some more later when we brew. But, Beautiful. And so we'll talk about, how, about grinding coffee. But, but for now. You know, I was telling a couple of my staff yeah. that we were going to do a coffee thing. Yeah. And he says, what about decaf? Well, you know, the coffee benefits that I was talking about, it's not the caffeine that causes the benefit because the studies show that decaf coffee, you get the same benefit as regular coffee. So for those of you who aren't drinking caffeinated coffee, you, you get the same you, benefits. You're good. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to make sure it's all very, very neat. Now, the recipe is pretty simple. Yeah. We want to do this early, kind of let it sit in the refrigerator, cool down, and marinate. Get all, marinate get those flavors yeah and that's what exactly what we're gonna do right now okay so we're gonna go ahead and sear and save the marinade okay All right. we're gonna okay. save the marinade I'm not tell you why we're gonna save the marinade we're gonna do three of them okay Tim okay one for me one for you and one for Randy okay all right, all right. Yeah. let's let it sit for a few minutes get that flavor okay. of the coffee the flavor okay of the coriander, the flavor of the black pepper, you yeah, know, yeah. let it flavor up a little Red bit. Red wine. Mm -hmm. Red wine. You, we, you and I can smell it. Mm -hmm. One day we'll I, have smell I wish TV. you all could smell this. It just really smells good. This is This, this is, is wonderful. Nice. This yeah. is wonderful. This is fine dining. What I'm going to do is, like I said, we're going to leave it here, cover mm -hmm. it up, and mm -hmm. slow heat. Yeah. Let it cook. Let it, you know, reach its temp. Or I am just going to go ahead and throw it in the oven with okay. my baked potato. And I'm a... That was great. But, you know, I love cooking. I love what I do. But making fresh pasta, that was great. You know what? That show made me want a pasta machine. Here are a few tips on making good pasta. Knead the dough long enough until it is completely smooth and elastic, at least 10 to 15 minutes. If you break it apart and there are air pockets or crumbly bits of unworked flour inside, it is not ready. After kneading, separate the dough into smaller portions that are easier to work. Keep the dough moist by covering the dough balls with a kitchen towel until you work them. If you're using a pasta machine, roll the balls out no wider than will fit into the machine. The task will be easier as a team project it works better to have one person feeding and cranking and one person catching the pasta as it is cut and spreading it out on a flat surface to dry. Making fresh pasta is easier than you think and the flavor, well, it's in the freshness. That's looking good. Reggie, let me see. Perfect, perfect. Why don't we just cut them into individual balls and we'll let them put them here and let them rest for a few minutes? Okay. You know, we have all learned so much about food and uh, cooking and, and, flavors, and, and flavors and techniques and techniques, nutrition from Memorial Cooking Innovations. And, you know, I have to say I'm a little sad to tell our viewers about uh, an opportunity that you have coming up. Can I tell them? Sure you can. Well, Chef Manny is taking over the family business, Marini's, yes. in Houston, Texas. Yes. And so tell us a little bit about the restaurant Marini's. Well, Marini's has been in business back in the 70s, but 
we reopened about nine years ago, so we've always been in business. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dad's just ready to retire, um, mm -hmm. so he wants me to take over. And all we do is empanadas, and we do hundreds of flavors of them. Mm. The good thing about it is that I'm taking this with me, the healthier version, too. Mm. So, I mean, there's cool. a lot of good options, and it's a family-owned business, and it's it's a business that needs to grow more and more, you know, right. so looking forward to it. Okay, and so when we all come to Marini's in Houston, uh, we can tell you that we saw you on Memorial Cooking Innovations. You sure did. And, and we're all going to be looking, all of us, right, are going to be looking for that sign that has our picture and signature on it back in the days when we were doing Memorial Cooking Innovations. And, you know, and, and I want to thank you and everybody here with Randy as well that, you know, we got to take this cooking show, make it fun, and then spread it out around the counties right. here. And that right. was the whole purpose of this. For those that couldn't come, can yeah. actually see us and learn. And we get a lot of comments, excellent comments, about how fun that was. Or, you know, sometimes they have to record it and watch mm -hmm. it as they're cooking so they don't miss yeah. anything. And yeah. I enjoy that. You and know, I hear, I hear people tell me that, that they'll set their laptop up and watch how we're doing something so they can they do can the do recipe. it Exactly. But you, so said, you said counties, and I'm going to correct you there. It's actually cities. Uh, it's, it's, several, it's eight cities in Texas and 46 cities across the country. Yeah. So you people in Minnesota, you guys come down to Houston, Texas, look up Marini's, and you can come in and you can see the real McCoy right there making oh, empanadas. You know, you never know. You might be down there. We'll be recording another show. That's you right. know what I mean? So, small world, but we'll be, we'll be in touch. So, with you and you down in Houston and me here in Lufkin, we're going to continue to change the world one, one bite, bite at a time. time. Uh, how to improve your cooking skills and how to improve your health. That's why they're watching, right? Exactly. <laughs> and you're supposed to say, you're supposed you to tick me. <laughs>